What is interesting to me about Queen Sugar is she hires female directors. Exclusively. Exclusively. Yeah. Um, and were you involved at all with that creative choice? Um, no, I, that creative choice? choice is really all Ava's. We talked about it, but it's really all Ava's. I think Queen Sugar is, is kind of interesting for a number of reasons from the deal-making perspective. So now Ava has done Selma. She's met Oprah. Oprah it was a book that Oprah had op optioned. Oprah gives it to Ava, and Ava's larger vision of it is, if you really think this one through, this is so obvious, but, it, but like many obvious things, it's not what's depicted in the media. Um, the majority of African Americans in this country made their living as farmers, whether they were farming as property or farming as sharecroppers or f as farming on their own. But you never ever see a farming family, for the most part black or white, depicted in television because... From their point of view, right? From any point of view. Think yeah. about how many, how many television shows can you think of once you <laughs> get past, you know, kind of the early 60s or so, where people mm -hmm. live on a farm and work that farm, but yet that's a big part of the American story. And, that, and maybe that's one of the issues in television that we don't tell enough American stories. So the story of Queen Sugar is a quintessential American story of a family whose legacy is farming. And all the complications that arise from them having once been property that farmed. And, and, and their transition to being owners. And it's a wonderfully engaging story. But um, I really think that in large part that it got made because of not only Ava's vision, Oprah Winfrey, but also, quite frankly, um, Susan Rovner at Warner Horizon. Hmm. Susan understood this from the very first moment that Ava and Oprah brought it to her. And I don't know that it would have been made there without her. And she deserves so much credit for having been the person who had the foresight. And, and I think that's why we say things like representation matters. Because I don't know that the guy who would have typically been in that position 10, 15 years, maybe even five years ago, would have so much gotten why a story about an African-American family whose connection to the, to the land was visceral yeah. in the way that Susan did. And Susan got that story, although she's a city girl. She went to Barnard like me. <laughs> and we're, we're, Susan and I are also connected through our local Barnard club. Who is it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. We've t we talk to a lot of female directors. Um, and one of the recurring sort of themes is that the, the feeling that they get one shot to make an impression. And if they screw up in any way, then they don't get that second shot. Do you see that? Oh, it's worse than that because they they have to, first they have to get the one shot to screw up. Because, you know, this, this is the incredible thing about our business. Um, women must be taught to do something. Men just, men learn by doing, women learn by being taught to do, and then they can do. So, you know, you see, and, I, and I'm a real student of this, a lot of times this is just, just how weirdly insane I was, I will sit down with you know, IMDb and Variety Insight, and I'll just look at all of these things, and I'll look at people's credits and draw the, high, the, the their careers. And a lot of times what you see is that men have been mentored by other men and get these incredible opportunities to direct, especially in episodic television. And if they don't do such a great job, they get another opportunity, as they should, as we all should, because you learn by your mistakes and you if this is what you're meant to do, you get better. But women are often asked to shadow for, I mean, I had a client who shadowed for almost an entire season a bunch of different shows before she got her first opportunity to direct. So when they say Ava's hired a bunch of female directors, another way of saying this is Ava has hired a number of very experienced filmmakers for whom others, who others felt that their experience as filmmakers didn't translate to their being able to direct television. Since she doesn't believe that, and she believes that moving from one medium to another is doable, 
She simply hires them based on their artistic integrity as filmmakers. Do you see that becoming more of a standard than an aberration? I think it will in some ways always be an aberration because um, we're, there's so much of a reluctance to kind of put yourself on the line and hire that person who's never worked before um, because we're just in such a forgiving economic climate, you know? Mm. Um, but the nice thing about it is that the people that, that she has hired, they, I mean, she teases it all the time. She says, like, she hires someone and then she can't hire them again because she can't get them again because they're so busy working on other things that they're unavailable to her. Amazing. So she takes a chance. They do wonderful work. And then they're, you know, the, then the rest of the business just embraces them.